See, now for me, I feel like summer has officially started. Uh, the kids, they all out of school. Uh, the Ravens, they all out of minicamp, and they won't be back for uh, a little while, a little over a month. Um, the heat is real outside. Even being in Florida, it's been a little more hot than normal. But I appreciate it because y'all know anything below 70 down here, mm -mm, hate it. That's freezing. But anyway, something else that seemed to be freezing at some of the worst times last year ended up being Ravens offense. But what were some of the different reasons that it actually stalled out? Well, we could go through uh, quite a few of them, but something that's a really, really good question that a lot of us have brought up time to time and a lot of us have thought about on a lot of different occasions when it comes to Ravens offense, we know that it goes through eight. Lamar Jackson is the Ravens offense. Everything happens through him. But can literally everything happening through him be a good and a bad thing too? Do the Ravens sometimes use Lamar Jackson just a bit too much? Well, in order to help us find the answer to that question, I brought on a very, very, very special guest. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. So YouTube, team keep it clean. A very, very special guest in the building. Uh, we've been trying to do this for a while and we finally got it going. My guy, All22, welcome to the channel. Appreciate having you on. Um, and to just get right into it, why do you do what you do with the film breakdowns and, and the film study? What made you start doing it? Well, first of all, thank you know, thank you for having me on. Uh, all of us that you know watch Ravens stuff on YouTube or try to you know do content stuff ourselves, you know, look at you and Sip to Tally and other guys as like the OGs, the originators of you know Ravens content on YouTube. So you know, appreciate what you do and then bringing me on here. Let me speak with your audience. So thank you, first of all. Hey, no um, the reason reason why I do it is a I've, I've been blessed enough to um, be coached by great coaches in multiple sports, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, gained appreciation for the tactics, the instruction, and the um, hopefully the ability to motivate people, you know, myself when I was coaching and I watched the Ravens. I'm, I just, I get into the games. I just been a Ravens fan for so long. I mean, I'll never forget in the playoffs, the Super Bowl year when uh, Bernard Power knocked out the running back, Stephen Ridley for the Patriots. I literally jumped up, you know, I, I think I was like 36 years old. I jumped up and touched the ceiling. The ceiling was 10 feet, man. I hadn't been, I hadn't touched 10 feet in a long time at that point in time. So, like, I'm just passionate about the Ravens, particularly mm -hmm. defense. And I think that probably comes through in my videos. Um, so, I just, I just love, you know, trying to be involved as, and, and not coaching. I stopped coaching myself in 2019. Mm -hmm. And so, really, that's when my content, me trying to create content, I really had the opportunity to do so. And uh, I probably create too much content at, at times, but I just I just want to try to be a bridge for Ravens fans in mm -hmm. terms of trying to understand things. And kind of like you and I talked about before, being um, I learned from the community as well uh, as hopefully mm -hmm. them learn, learn it from me. Yeah, that makes sense, too. Uh, and we appreciate everything that you do. Now, um, you do have a YouTube channel, of course. Let everybody know where they can find you on YouTube and Twitter and anything else. All 22 films on YouTube. Um Apparently, my underscores make it difficult to type in. And then uh, Twitter, Twitter, same handle. Actually, I think it's all 22 NFL cuts. I've been having – I wish somebody smarter than me on Twitter would help me figure out how to change the actual uh, Twitter uh, address designation. Uh, but all 22 films on YouTube, uh, small YouTube channel, mostly focused on Raven stuff. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, I branch out and watch some other teams. You know, I'm going to try this year to do a little bit more AFC North stuff because, we, you know, we play six games in the AFC right. North. Mm -hmm. So, okay, just Sounds those good. two. And I will have both of those down below in the description. So y'all make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel and also follow him on Twitter. Now, thank you. Th oh, yeah, for sure. This offseason, uh, the Ravens, they added a lot of depth to their offensive line. Um, they mm -hmm. have 
quite a bit of running backs right now uh, as we head into training camp in a couple of weeks. Um, they drafted two tight ends um, while still, of course, retaining their own as well. Um, they brought back Patrick Ricard, their fullback. Mm -hmm. uh, they got rid of Hollywood, um, but they signed a plethora uh, of undrafted rookie free agents at wide mm -hmm. receivers. So they have done a significant, a significant amount of moves uh, on the offense. Um, but one of the Agreed. biggest moves that, uh, that that's questioned right now is what's going to happen with Lamar Jackson. Now, we know, of course, Lamar Jackson, he's going to play for the Ravens this year, so on and so forth. We expect him to. I'm sure a deal will get done eventually. When that comes, when it happens, cool. But for Lamar Jackson, we know that he is the focal point of this offense. He's the engine of this mm -hmm. offense. He is uh, the everything of this offense. But a lot of times it can seem like he's a little too much. Used a little bit too much. Uh, used a little bit too unnecessarily and whatnot. Um, so how do you feel about Lamar Jackson's use uh, with the Baltimore Ravens offense? Well, like you said, I mean, he's definitely the focal point, the 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 tip of the spear, you know, to use a military description. He's he is our offense or he in 2021, he was our offense. You know, even though we had Mark Andrews, Marquise Brown, Rashad Bateman, once he became healthy, we didn't see Gus or JK, you know, a single snap mm -hmm. in 2021. And that had an impact. <clears throat> but, um, you know, even though he is the focal point, I, I still in, my, in one of my messages to you. I still think there is uh, at least two elements to his usage that I think is somewhat unfair. And I can mm -hmm. cite specific examples occasionally. Uh, I think there is um, overuse at times, mm -hmm. and I'll expand on that in a moment. I think there is also unnecessary use, mm -hmm. and, the unne and the overuse in 2021 in some cases, I understand that we had to do that. The Colts game, save us, Lamar. You know, mm -hmm. in, in other games, save us. And he can do those things. And I, I have a, a movie reference that I have once said on my channel uh, that hopefully will make sense. Uh, and Simultaneous to that, and the third one, which maybe we'll get into this video, maybe not, it is I think there's inappropriate use, which, mm. and you know, sounds like unnecessary, but it's a, I'll, I'll try to explain how it's slightly different. Mm -hmm. And I'm really referring to like goal goal line runs with our quarterback, or or third down runs when we now when we have J.K. and Gus, and it's third and two. I'm just not sure that we need to run pistol option with Lamar Jackson, <laughs> and is it is it effective? Yes. Me personally, my coaching background, I was exposed to two really great option offensive coordinators. So I understand it, or at least I think I understand the option. And it's a great concept. Mm -hmm. I, that's just how I feel. Having said that, I don't want Lamar Jackson doing that in 2022. And I didn't want him doing that in 2021. And I think there's some film evidence that shows overuse, unnecessary use, and inappropriate use over the course of a season mm -hmm. sometimes can wear him down, even though he is Superman. Mm. Okay. Now, with the overuse, what are some examples of how you feel the Ravens may overuse one Lamar Jackson? Well, in order to kind of paint this scenario, I kind of have to talk about other quarterbacks a few times. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, you know, first of all, you're talking to someone who believes that in 10 or 15 years, there will be more Lamar Jacksons in the league. And I don't mean super athletes like him that reached the level of athleticism that he has. Cause there's just not that many guys like that. But what I mean is more guys who can do all of the things Lamar can do, read the option out of the pistol, read the option out of the shotgun, throw the football well, escape and make plays. And then if you've listened to my channel at all, you know, um, or any of your listeners have, you know, I contend that Lamar is a closer. Mm. That he, he gets better as the game goes on. He can handle the things that are given to him. So I think in some of those cases, the people that are like that, you tend to overuse them. I'm going to paint the scenario, and this does not come from a specific game. You can feel free to interrupt me if you need to. Oh, do your thing. So first down, how many quarterbacks in the NFL will be asked to do things like this? First down, we run pistol option, okay. and he's got to read the D end, decide whether to give it or keep it. And let's say on this play he keeps it, runs around the edge for eight yards. Great. Second down. Maybe we go play action pass. Lamar is expected to do all the things that a, quote, typical quarterback would do in the NFL or college. Mm -hmm. You know, decide who's open, 
deliver the football accurately. Keep in mind the play before he just he just ran for eight yards, and yeah, he's Superman. You know, get it? He can do that. Oof. But now his heart rate's elevated. He's he's got to make decisions after running the football in practice when they're practicing their throws. Lamar's practicing his throws. The quarterbacks are practicing their throws. The, the they're not running the football for ten or twelve yards in a drill and then having him throw. You understand what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. You. Wow. That's <laughs> you know what's so crazy. I you 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 broke it down and explained it so so simply. Um, and shout out to Simply AS10 by the way. But you broke it down and explained it so simply, but it was super effective. And, and I I never thought about it like that before. Mm -hmm. um just the wow i, I yeah I, I never thought of it like that before but i appreciate the, the the simple explanation um like you mentioned how he, he'll run for eight yards on first down uh and, and then you have to to pass the ball on second down or whatnot and, and just the uh the weighty responsibility uh, and the added responsibility of having to do so many things but yeah go go ahead because wow well, yeah, yeah that just blew my, my mind and and I have, as I said earlier, I've been exposed to two really high level option coaches. So mm -hmm. they would they would have our quarterbacks practice those things. All right, we're going to read the option two plays, mm -hmm. on and and you're going to run. You know, you're going to run because we can control that as coaches. We can give you a keep read for the quarterback, meaning we can control that second play. Have the DN crash down. You keep it. Now you got to run around the edge, and then the third play is going to be a pass play. So you can create situations in practice mm -hmm. that simulate what you're going to ask that kid or that player you know, to do during the game. Now, Lamar's not a kid. He's 25 years old. He's still incredibly young, which is amazing. Uh, but in any case, in my, in my scenario that I'm kind of presenting here, you know, maybe we get the first down because Lamar scrambles on that second down play. Maybe he delivers the football to someone. Cool. How many times have we had situations where Lamar runs the ball, Lamar scrambles, and then like maybe the next play, we run another pistol read option. And I know that I'm kind of branching out into offensive philosophy and opening it up for us to talk about, you know, who calls our plays, how they call our plays. That's really not my point, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who is responsible for it, but in many situations, Lamar's asked to do something that Tom Brady's never asked to do. That Russell mm -hmm. Wilson, or Russell Wilson used to run more, but he doesn't now. He's a little older, but he was a great athlete. People forget that he played college baseball, professional baseball, excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so how many quarterbacks are asked to do all those things, run the ball by design, maybe scramble, maybe execute a typical pass play, and then on the third or fourth play in that sequence, go ahead and run another option play. And to me, that that's overuse. And it's yeah. and here's what I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cite an example a little later on on you know, in my example of unnecessary use, and this, they're kind of morphing together here. When we played Minnesota in week uh was it week eight? I don't even remember. Nine. It, was, it don't matter. Go ahead. It, it was after we lost to Cincinnati, right? So it must have been week eight. Hmm. We're, we're playing another football game down in Florida four days later. Four days later. And Lamar carried the ball 21 times against Minnesota. Now, did we need him to save us? Yes, we did. Hmm. You know, I know we did. But I'm talking about the level of thought that is required of a coach to be responsible for your greatest asset, which he is. He's the greatest asset we've ever had as an offensive player in the history of this organization. Yes. You know, you could mention Jamal Lewis because he ran for 2000. Certain mm -hmm. people are going to mention Joe Flacco. He won a Super Bowl. Fine. But longevity of use, effectiveness as a player, positional rank in the NFL. He's our best offensive asset ever. Mm -hmm. We knew yep. we had a game four days after playing the Vikings. In my opinion, there were situations where we overused him in that Vikings game. Hmm. even though we needed his impact because 96 hours later, if I did my math right, we were going to play a game in Miami. And in, in my opinion, you risk injury. You not just injury, excuse me. You risk losing your best asset by constantly running him. And I, I think we're going to see less of it this year, to be honest with you, Inger Raven. I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to see games where he runs the ball 20 times. I don't, hmm. but yeah. I thought there was times where the usage in the game was overuse, especially combined with the next game we were playing being 96, 96 hours later and, and, you know, five states away, right? Yeah, and almost 96 degrees too. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so, um, oof, yeah, I, wow, I, I, I love it. Not not love him being overused, but love the, the, the explanation and the breakdown uh, of all of that. So that's overuse. 
He can but, take it though. He can take it. You know, my, my movie reference is kind of corny. Sorry for interrupting. I don't know if you're a movie guy, thing. <clears throat> but my movie reference is the, the ending scene to the dark Knight, the second Batman movie with Christian I fell, Bale. I fell asleep on the dark Knight. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, so, anybody watching. That's all right. So, <laughs> so the, to the last scene is, you know, is commissioner Gordon's son asking him like, why are we, why do we have to chase him? You know, Batman's trying to take the, Batman's going to take the responsibility for a murder that he did not commit. So Batman's, you know, running the kids asking why we, why do we have to ch chase him? He says, because he can take it. And that's to me, that's Lamar. Why do we have to overuse him? Because he can take it. He's a superhero. He can do it. Hmm. Now, now last year, the statistical impact, you know, shifted and turned in a negative way because of how poor the offensive line was. And we had no running game threat. Generally, mm -hmm. that's not his fault. He, he can do, Everything that they would ask him to do, even if it's overuse under normal situation, having a below average bottom five offensive line and bottom five or bottom 10, you know, running back type threat back there um, is not normal situations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was rough last year. Injuries just whoo, injuries were disgusting last year. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest things we're hoping for this season uh, is just a, a bill of health. Um, so hopefully whatever changes the Ravens made as far as training and, and sometimes some stuff just happens because mm -hmm. uh, you could do everything the right way. You can do everything perfectly, but sometimes somebody might fall the wrong way. They may land on their leg the wrong way and stuff just unfortunately happens. So hopefully none of that this year. Um, so you talk about the overuse, uh, but what about the unnecessary use? So the example I, I created, even though it was a scenario and, and, you know, in terms of those three or four downs in a row, it's not far fetched, right? I mean, no, no, no. We do <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and my, my comparison for Lamar all the time, and I know there's, you know, basketball fans who love and hate this guy, but I compare him to LeBron because LeBron is his own system. And I think, mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier in your kind of intro, Lamar can be his own system, but I don't think we have to do that to him, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's a cumulative use of a player. Um, and I don't, I don't agree with some of the things we do first and second quarter. I don't want to see our, our great quarterback running the football on a first and 10 mm. on our own 35 yard line in the first or second quarter. I just don't see the point now. And I, I, I will say that about the first quarter of an individual game, but I also mean that in terms of the season, I think that, there needs to, we need to be strategic about when we are asking him to do some of those superhuman things, not just running the football, but some of the sprint out stuff, which we don't do sprint out enough. But there needs to be times where we give him a run pass option in terms of running to the edge. And, and I think that most of those situations should be later in the game mm. or in crucial situations. Um, and so unnecessary to me means if it's not in a big moment and if we don't have other guys who are scoring, who are doing, I'm using a basketball reference again. If LeBron's the only guy on his team scoring, I understand as a coach calling every play for him. Mm -hmm. But in situations where, you know, other guys are scoring consistently, we don't need LeBron or Lamar to make every play. And I have a specific situation here. Uh, and, and this is not a scenario that I made up. And again, it's from the Mike, the Vikings game. Okay. Now we won the game. Lamar pay, played great. I think he did throw two picks, right? Two picks. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second one was like that great play by Anthony Barr. So, I mean, yeah. what are you going to do? So he, he had a great game, statistical numbers, three TDs, two, 266 yards, ran the ball 21 times. So like 385 total yards or something like that. If I did my math right, three, six. Um, but one of, of the plays angered me watching it live. It was mid fourth quarter. And okay. this to, this to me really it made me upset from a long-term plan. Like if we were doing this to a kid, because primarily I coached high school and youth football, I would hope that a parent would come up to me and be like, hey, why did you do this to my child? Mm -hmm. So halfway through the fourth quarter, I think we're tied 24-all with the, with the Vikings. Of course, we had to come back. We just stopped them on a three and out. Lamar's done everything. <laughs> you know, running. If you look at the play-by-play -play to this point, he's been our offense all day. So I understand that because the people who you know are listening as they go as we go through this example, they might say, well, we had to do that because we didn't have JK, we didn't have Gus, but just listen to the play by play. All right. Mm -hmm. Ninth our ninth drive of the game. 
Lamar hits Marquise Brown for 22 yards. Okay. Devonta Freeman runs for eight yards. Okay. Le'Veon Bell runs for seven yards. Mm-hmm. Le'Veon Bell again for eight. Mm-hmm. And then Le'Veon Bell for five. Okay. We're winning every single block across the board at the point of attack and away from the point of a- attack. Similar to the Chargers game and the Chiefs game, and you can tell me what your perception of those games is, I thought we wore their def- those defenses down. Yeah, um, and, and, I, and I think uh, especially in the Chargers game, um, I think Chiefs game, yeah, in the long run, mm-hmm. um, they wore them down. But in the Chargers game, I, I think the, the defense, just with how they just kept stopping the Chargers over and over and giving the Ravens mm-hmm. the ball back, uh, that helped so much, uh, and that helped just the Ravens' offense just keep pushing and keep putting it on them. Um, and the Ravens' offense, they that was like the probably the most complete game uh, of last Absolutely. year. But all three phases just helped each other out big time. But, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Great game. You mm-hmm. know, great game. So we have four runs in a row after Lamar opened the drive with hitting Marquise Brown. Okay. Four runs in a row, like 28, 29 yards. So, you know, a little over seven yards a carry. We're winning every single block. As a coach, you can see that. Just just so people know, like, coaches are watching. They've got, uh, was it Surface Pros that the NFL uses? Yeah, Microsoft, yeah. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> so they got the end zone. They got the end zone angle. They got the tight end zone angle. They got the sideline angle. You know, the coaches on the sideline are watching it live. Don't get me wrong. But there's guys who are assigned to watch it. They know the play because they hear it. They might not be able to speak. You know, but they have a, a earpiece that they can hear the play call. So they know what the play call is and who should be doing what. You can see that we're winning every single block. So we get a first and 10 on the Vikings 11 yard line. Four minutes left. We just ran the ball down their throat, four plays in a row. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you don't hopefully you don't remember this sequence. All right. So I what don't. do you think? What do you think we ran next? What do you think the next play is we ran? I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go – I'm going to go read option play with Lamar. Close, kind of. We we went – we had just gone 22 personnel, so two tight ends, two running backs, right? So we're cars on the field for four plays in a row, smash mouth them. Now, whether, you, whether you or anyone listening likes that style of play or not, that doesn't matter. It doesn't. You do what You do what's working. Right. You do whatever's working. If it's 11 personnel and throwing the ball every play, great. Do it. If it's 22 personnel and running the ball, great. Do it. We were busting them up, wearing them down. We went empty. Oh, and we and we run a QB draw with with a screen option to the right with Lamar Hmm. out of empty. Now. Lamar is a winner. He's a competitor. So what do you expect him to do? When there's two options on the play, one of them is throw a screen over there, or to keep right? it, mm-hmm. or keep the. He's going to keep it. Mm-hmm. That that's who he is, and I don't. I get fired up because it's like we're beating them everywhere at the point of attack. We're we're, <sighs> we're we didn't have to do that, and and that's why I say it's unnecessary. Yeah. Now he now he it was a great run. He got down to the one yard line, right? But he had to spin off a defender at like the three. And then during his not his spin move, but like a like a twirling spin, like kind of half in the air, a second defender hits him, he almost fumbled. Hmm. So Lamar fumbles that football if he does, you know. It's like, okay, that's Lamar's fault. Yeah, kind of, but kind of not. Don't call it a stupid play hmm. when when we're winning at the point of attack. And and to me, if I'm Lamar's cousin or you know he doesn't have an agent but someone who's close to him that would be my concern you know if you were to go at the i don't know macro or i can never figure out what it is macro or micro level you know in terms of his usage and if there was a complaint that would be it Hmm. there's times where we didn't need to do that with him because we're winning doing other things other guys are producing i know that freeman and bell did not have great seasons but in that moment on that drive we were really beating the Vikings game down. And I already kind of, you know, went into my second part of my point, which was that we were playing in Miami four days later. Now, now look at that play call with that in mind. Ah. See, that's um for me, something that I brought up on here a lot is like with uh with the Ravens, um, especially recently, and recently, obviously Greg Roman's been the offensive coordinator. 
there's been a lot of times when he will just he'll get out of the the flow of the game. Yes, what's working? Um, yeah, because yeah, something could be working. They could be successful at it, having all this uh, success with it. But then he'll be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's do something else. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just it can be <laughs> like you mentioned. It can be really frustrating to watch uh, as a fan. Um, but hopefully, this totally will be different. But totally. I mean, when if if something is working, and we're up by let's say we're up by twenty points, and we betray what's working, okay, mm-hmm. understood. But we're in a tie game with a team that, you know, I'm I'm sorry, is not a super talented team. They have some talented receivers. The Vikings do, but there was something wrong with that team the last two years in terms of defensively. They got bullied, and we were bullying them at that point in the game. Again, ninth drive of the game, and we're at home. It's not like we bullied them all game. I'm not trying to offer that we did. We did not. Lamar was our offense. But at that point, we're bullying them, and it was not needed. Hmm. Um, I, I was I was pretty I was pretty upset, you know, on in that moment. I'm still upset months later. You know, <laughs> I am. Think let me let me read off some numbers. You know, for that game, Freeman was 13 carries for 79 yards. Good game. Mm-hmm. Bell, Bell was 11 carries for 48 yards. Now, you know, did we, did we need Lamar's performance to win? Absolutely. But I'm talking about that specific situation. So hopefully the people mm-hmm. listening can focus in on just that situation. We did not need Lamar to run the football in that moment. We have other guys who can do stuff. Now, so I like to use basketball analogies. Is it okay if I use one? Of course. By the way, what's the score of the game? That's a good question. I don't even know right now. Let me check. It is if ESPN would ever load. It is oh oh yikes. Oh, it's 54 to 39. Golden State is up. Mm. Close. Mm. Maybe they're gonna close them out. So it's just what 15 points, I think. Yeah, 15 points. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Good for them. Good story. Yeah, we'll see how it ends up. But go ahead. So my my basketball analogy here would be, you know, let's say you're let's say you're the Celtics, and and Jalen Brown is just taking Clay Thompson one on one repeatedly, like let's say three possessions in a row, and I'm I'm going to use this specific number because it was four run plays in a row previously with Freeman and Bell, prior to that empty you know quarterback draw run with Lamar, and then on the fourth possession, let's say the Warriors switch. Did they know that Jalen Brown's been taking Clay Thompson? So let's say mm-hmm. they switch. And and what what would you do on the fourth possession? You probably give the ball to whoever Clay Thompson's guarding now and let him let him try to work on him, or you'd run a pick and roll to try to get Clay Thompson to switch on Jalen Brown so you can keep doing what's working, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to fix what's not broken. Man. Exactly. Why go away from it? And and we are kind of branching off into the Greg Roman issue, and I don't mean to sidetrack this video. You know, toward that. Uh, And maybe this basketball analogy doesn't work, but on on that fifth possession or fourth fourth or fifth possession, whichever one the the next one will be, Mm -hmm. does it make any sense to not go at Clay Thompson or to not try to recreate that same matchup? At the professional level, your margin for error is so small. Even even with a generational player like Lamar, your margin for error is so small, you've got to find whatever advantages and matchup edges that you have and go to them. And, and that would be the part that would be concerning to me as a Lamar fan. I was a Lamar fan before we drafted him, hmm. you know? Okay. Um, yeah. And, and was one of those people who was like, once we got, cause we drafted Hayden Hurst first, I believe. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And was like, you know, well, we're not getting him now. And then, you know, we back in and we, and we grab him again, but we grab another first round pick. I just, I feel like there's times we got to identif- identify who Lamar is as a coach. And I don't mean to say save him from himself, but, don't put him in the situation where he's going to try to dive into the end zone. And oh, by the way, Le'Veon Bell scored on the next play, and he <laughs> and and, it, and, the, and the gap for him to run through was like five foot wide. Right? <laughs> so my my illustration works for you know unnecessary use here, mm-hmm. and I, I uh, I'm I'm not a fan of those situations where Greg Roman goes away from what's working, especially when you know what he what he chooses to do is run the ball with our quarterback who uh, we, I think we got to get away from that as much as possible. Mm, I, I agree. Um, and Lamar, yeah, he is just, he's everything. He is the end all be all uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to Ravens offense. 
Yep. Um, and it's it's a great thing, but at the same time, you just uh, you want them to to put it in somebody else's hands uh, mm-hmm. sometimes, and just to 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 have somebody else uh, be that guy for them. And of course, I know superstars they make plays. Your your, your yep. playmakers make plays, so you want them to do that. Uh, but you just want other people making plays besides Lamar too. And when you have when you have immediate evidence right in front of your face that other guys are making plays. Like if I was up here doing conjecturing, like my first example was conjecture. It was a scenario that I made up. If I was up here, you know, not providing a specific example, this is a specific example where other guys are making plays. We and oh, oh, by the way, the next four runs that we had in that game totaled like 33 yards. I'm talking about like the 10th possession, the 11th. So we continued to run the ball against them. You know, it's not like they fixed it on the next possession and we couldn't run. And, you know, I I don't care if it's run or pass, whatever's working, continue to do it. And I'm not saying that strategically we should always try to limit Lamar's exposure. But I I do not like when coaches don't have awareness of who they're who they who they're coaching. And Lamar's always going to try to make a play, like you said. And when other people are available to make plays, like I hope Rashad Bateman gets 120 targets this year so we can see mm-hmm. him making plays and Lamar doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. Um, and, and, yeah, that would be the expectation too, especially uh, with Hollywood, um, with him having – being traded. And he, he got a lot of targets last year. They weren't mm-hmm. all necessarily quality targets because I know mm-hmm. the number 146 gets tossed around. Oh, he got 146 targets, but – some of them came from Lamar, some came from Huntley, some came from uh, Josh mm-hmm. Johnson. And not every throw from every quarterback was on point, or on target. Mm-hmm. Um, but with with Rashad Bateman, and I know we're kind of getting sidetracked, but that's fine. At every one of these videos that I do is sidetracked. Um, but with Rashad Bateman, he him having a, a bigger catch radius, I think that'll help uh, Lamar Jackson out a lot. Because like with, with Hollywood, um, you, you got to put it like right on the money. Mm-hmm. Um, for Hollywood to get it, but with Rashad Bateman, he gives you some more uh, leeway. And I think, n- no, no doubt. And I think too, like, you know, I don't know the basketball comparison here for Hollywood Brown. I'm not going to try to make one off the cuff because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be disrespectful or wrong headed. But I, for Bateman, Bateman reminds me of like six two, six three combo guard who's like, who's who's too big. I'm not talking about the NBA. I'm talking about like street ball. Who's too big hmm. for your point guard to guard? He's too strong. And then when you put like a small forward, a six, 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 seven guy on him, he's too quick for him. Mm-hmm. To me, Bateman is a guy who has an answer for every prototype DB who guards him. He can out quick mm-hmm. some, he can out quick the bigger, slower guys. He can he can overpower the smaller guys who are speedy. That's mm-hmm. what I see in him. Now, whether whether that NFL projection is going to work completely, I don't know, but that's kind of what I see to make a basketball reference. Marquise Brown does not is not going to win against certain DBs by three or four yards or certain guys that he's just not going to be as open against. I think Bateman's catch radius is bigger. Number one, like you said, and I think he's got a second and third option that Marquise Brown didn't have. Okay. All right. So to in, cl- in c- closing, what would be your solution uh, to fixing these issues as far as the overuse uh, and the unnecessary use of Lamar Jackson? Well, this is a this is going to be a low bar for an NFL coach, for real. I mean, we kind of already said it. I think I said it three times. You know, do what works. Do what mm-hmm. do what is working in that moment. Now, we we had a lot of slow starts last year, I believe. Well, you can correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. Oh, well, you're right. We had a lot. Mm-hmm. And so there are times where we're trying to find what is working. Uh, the best coaches that I've ever been blessed to be around are going to generally find something to come out with that's going to work in the first or second possession. And even in – now, I do remember the Miami game. We we kicked a field goal to go up 3 nothing. Then we missed the field goal on the second possession. So we were at least moving the ball, I believe. Mm-hmm. Then things fell apart, right? Everything. Mm-hmm. I would say do what works or what is working, number one. And and here's the part that is a, a low bar, if you ask me. Like, reduce – someone on the staff needs to be monitoring – how much we're using him. And I know coaches don't care about stats, but if we get to this to halftime and Lamar has 12 carries, hmm. that that's, that's not a long-term formula for him or for the Ravens. I'm not saying that, you know, running quarterbacks can't win. We've won a lot of games with Lamar. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. but he's he's not a running quarterback. He's a quarterback who can run. In, right. in my and there's a difference there, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, a, a huge difference. All right, so let's uh hope that <laughs> the Ravens and his offense uh they they get these issues correct because um it could just mean the longevity, uh, not only for Lamar, but really for the entire season. Um, and just taking them a lot farther uh than they've been getting recently. Um, Absolutely. And, and it's all about adjustments. And and Greg Roman said it himself. We as in, he said, as an offense, we have to adjust, evolve, and adapt. So let's hope that they stick to that. So once again, gotta, oh, go ahead. My bad, my bad, Ingrid. Oh, no, you're my good. I, th- I think on some level they got to get away from the pistol option. I mean, mm. for real, because it. I will tell you, as a person who has coached defense before, obviously nowhere near that level, mm-hmm. you are somewhat limited with the pistol option. You know, and there's some there's some schematic things that I'm talking about that I won't you know digress into here. But there's there's certain things that make that it that it's more difficult for us to do because we're in the pistol option. Mm-hmm. For, I'll give you one example: play action with a bootleg off of it to the other side. People talk about. I have heard people um, in videos, not yours obviously, <laughs> but other videos or social media make comments like Lamar's Lamar's ball skills on play action fakes are terrible. No, they're not. It's because he's in the, he's in the pistol and his back isn't turned to the defense when he's making that ball fake like Brian Tannehill's is or Aaron Rodgers is when he's under center. When your back is turned to the defense, you can hide the football easier because your body is in between the linebackers that are watching and the football. When you're in the pistol, you're only turning your body a little bit. Your body's not as turned. So Lamar – running a bootleg is not nearly as effective out of the pistol option. What I'm saying is to try to summarize, there are certain plays. Think of it like an umbrella. The pistol option, if you ask me, is an umbrella that's only one third of the way open. It's not very wide. And there are certain things under center and a typical shotgun that we can do that if you ask me has a wider umbrella and gives us more options, more things to do, more plays to run Mm -hmm. against the defense. So we won't be so predictable. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, man. And um, I, I I wonder, like I know um, Greg Roman, he spoke specifically about this going into last season that they were going to be running a lot more plays under center. Um, and I always wondered why they didn't. I think uh, they were like mm-hmm. maybe like a total of like maybe maybe five, maybe. Um, yes, not many. But yeah, it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, but I wonder if with the offensive line, the, the shape that they were in, uh, if that's part of the Definitely. reason why they didn't. Yeah, um, so, definitely. Yeah, but it is what it is. Again, hopefully we'll have health um, and the, the offensive play calling will put not only Lamar, but other guys in position, in position uh, right. to succeed. Make so, us less predictable. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yes, for sure. So all 22, appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you joining the channel. Again, let everybody know where they can find you at again on the YouTube and on the Twitter. You, YouTube is all 22 films. Um, and then, and then Twitter is all 22 NFL cuts and it's, I got underscores in between them. So it's going to be difficult for me to spell out without losing people's attention. Uh, I mean, I appreciate you having me on. It's always fun to talk Ravens, um, football, for sure. You know, talk about previous games and then project onto the future, you know, especially coming out of this mini camp here, but I think everybody should be excited because it sounds like there was a lot of positive stuff going on. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's the team Keep It Clean. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. And we out. Shout out to Graven.